This is your Bible Geeks Daily Download, cross-training as you wish. There are so many ways to say I love you. In a popular film about a so-called kissing book, a rugged farm boy and a beautiful girl fall in love. But whenever she bosses him around, he always responds with as you wish, when he really means I love you. Later, when she finds out he's still alive, the only way she knows it's truly him, the love of her life, is when he shouts, as you wish, while tumbling down a hill. But these two phrases aren't as different as you might think. We're cross-training to develop our servanthood, one of 12 marks of the master we're working on this year. Servanthood includes seeing with new eyes, humility, sacrificial love, and honor. So what does it look like to love someone enough to sacrifice for them? Here's what you need to know. The Princess Bride tells a sweet love story, but it's nothing compared to the Lord who loved us, His Bride, when we seemed unlovable. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, Romans 5, verse 6. The servant songs of Isaiah tell of the obedient servant who carried our sorrows, though we were the straying sheep. It's easy to think of love as some warm and fuzzy feeling that you have towards someone, but Christ-like love is a commitment to everyone, friend and enemy alike, seen in each interaction with others. It's good to tell people that we love them, but we also need to show them. Jesus didn't express love in empty platitudes, but on a cross. Sacrifice is an undeniable language of love. So whenever you doubt his love for you, go back to that supreme I love you. Then resolve again to lay down your life by serving people around you. So here's what you need to do. Examine the motive behind your sacrifices. You can give away everything you own or even lay down your life for someone. But if you don't do it out of love, it gains nothing. On the surface, your sacrifice might look noble or loving, but only you and the Lord know that for sure. Do you serve out of obligation, victimization, or a martyr complex? Or does it come from willing love? the decision to pursue another's well-being. Like a lamb before the shearers, practice silent submission to God rather than fighting for yourself. Broaden the scope of your kindness beyond your friends and people who treat you well. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Matthew 5 verses 46 and 47. Extend your welcoming warmth and friendship to neglected people around you. Lean in to listen for ways to serve. Ideally, we'd all express our needs clearly, but sometimes it takes investigation to understand how to support each other. Listen for people's struggles, pray with specificity, and give with generosity. How can you pour yourself out without going empty? It only works because God promises to fill us back up. We can give because God provides. Do you believe his promises? So how can we love others sacrificially through the week? Here's five challenges that you can do on your own along with us. First, we invite you to read John 3, 10 to 17, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 8, 1 John 3, 11 to 24, Matthew 5, 38 to 48, and Romans 5, 6 to 11. And then we'll reflect together on a spiritual question, asking ourselves, What's it look like for me to lay down my life for others in my day-to-day -day choices? And then we'll make our request to God, praying, Lord, pour into me a love for others that reflects your love. And then we challenge you to respond, taking action this week by telling someone you love them today, not with words, but with your actions. And finally, we encourage you to reach out by asking someone, how do you balance your needs with sacrificing for others? So let's love others as God loves us this week. And may the Lord bless you and keep you today. Shalom.